For the last few weeks, I've been sitting here making jokes about sheath underwear, trying to be funny, but I want to take a moment to be serious a little bit. Robert Patton is the uh, creator and owner of sheath underwear. He is a U.S. Army veteran, and he came up with the idea for this underwear while he was out in the Iraqi desert, serving our country, protecting your rights. And as you can imagine, being in a combat scenario like that, running around in boxers is just not ideal, uncomfortable, could even be a life threatening situation so he came up with sheath underwear i have some right here now the material itself is super soft i love it just for that reason alone but on top of that he uh came up with this pouch idea so you can put your junk in there and it gives you this incredible support perfect for when you're in a combat situation like that it keeps you dry it keeps your stuff separated so there isn't any friction it's also really great if you're a combat sports athlete or a professional wrestler like our guest today. And even if you're not, they're just very, very comfortable. And I highly encourage that you check it out. So go ahead to sheathunderwear.com, use my promo code RRBG, and save 20%. And look, you can even use it as a face mask. I'm gonna uh, pop this brewski. I have a special brewski here from Japan just for you, the Okinawa. Orion, <laughs> beautiful. I'm jealous. Mm. I'm so jealous. Are you, do you, are you not drinking right now? Was, uh, I'm not drinking at the moment just because I, I got a bunch of stuff to do. But uh, uh, Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but I hope to be by sometime this week. <laughs> so uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with Rocky Azucar Romero. What's going on? What's Thanks up? for having me. All right, so check this out. I uh, I don't typically like research people, uh, even if I'm a fan. Like I'm a fan of yours. I've watched all your matches. Not all your matches. That's that's an exaggeration. I watched a lot of your matches, <laughs> and uh, I'm a fan. But I never. I don't go in and like, ooh, let me find out about his life and like you know background and everything. I, I really don't. I don't do that for anyone in bands or anything like that, unless they're going to be on the podcast, and then I do research, right? Can I pull you up and you're Cuban? No. No? <laughs> Cuban-American professional wrestler? <laughs> I'm a fake Cuban. At one time it said I was Puerto Rican. That's the truth. Okay, uh, okay. Mom, mom and dad are, uh, my dad was from uh, Rincon, Puerto Rico. Okay. And uh, my, my mom, she's a New Yorican. She's from the Bronx. New Yorican. And, uh, yeah. But uh, when I started, this was like, right after during the body quest time it was like 97 i started training okay. so like uh my trainer jesse hernandez said ah oh, there's too many puerto ricans in wrestling you don't want to be puerto rican let's 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 tell everybody you're cuban we'll call you the cubanitos a little uh, so that stuck so like you know the first for sure the first like five six seven years of my career i was like the los cubanitos or havana pitbulls like with ricky reyes so like everybody just thought we were cuban or and every time i go to miami bro I, I i like i feel so sad because there's so many people coming up to me like bro you're cuban you like, yeah exactly and i'm like Aw. so are you cuban i'm cuban yes i'm cuban <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ruined I, it i guess let me delete all of my notes <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there was a somebody had a history of me that i was like born in cuba like when i was in mexico and then it was like a whole thing and i was like i didn't even know what to say i was like this is like pre internet of like now where you can just research everything but you know well kind on, of on your wikipedia it says you're cuban brother we got to get a change. Got to get a change, life. especially because there's such a beef between the Cubans and Puerto Rican. Did that offend you in any way, like deep inside when they're like, you should just be a Cuban. You're like, damn it, but I hate Cubans. No, I respect <laughs> Cubans, man. <laughs> there's like I a, love there's, Cubans. There's I love a, Cuban food. I love Cubans. Uh, I think they're, they're so eccentric. I love the way yeah. they talk, man. You know? Yeah, they drunk very, they, they drunk. They talk very drunk sounding is what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, no, I, I, I love that there's like this weird beef. Like, I don't know where it comes from, but like I, amongst my my friends there's always this weird beef between puerto ricans and cubans and mm -hmm. they like rag on each other all day ribbing each other it's insane dude <laughs> yeah i'm not with that yeah. i i love my my cuban brothers and sisters and uh you know i mean what what's the difference between a puerto rican and a cuban very like, little uh, right. 120 miles maybe less i don't even know <laughs> miles, uh, gandules <laughs> y frijoles negros that's the difference right there bro. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <a real difference. laughs> 
<laughs> so, uh, bro, you have uh, a big fight coming up with uh, uh, Chavo Guerrero on uh, yeah. Josh Barnett's Bloodsport. Our homie Josh hooked us up. Thank you, Josh, for hooking it up. Shout out. But, uh, you know, this is your second Bloodsport now. Correct. Uh, first blood sport you took on simon grimm that was fun to watch i'm a big fan of simon as well he's been on the show uh t- but tell me how was it that you know what appealed to you most about doing the barnett's uh blood sport he, aside from your obvious relationship you have with him from new japan and everything but right right well i mean like i've always been a fan of like that kind of style like a lot of i think you know, U.S. American uh, Western viewers. You know, their first time seeing blood sport or the type of wrestling that blood sport is. I mean, really, it's just like a modified, cooler way to present, like you know, the old Japanese UWFI style or ring style. You know, so like if you're like a super wrestling nerd like me, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, then you're just like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. But it basically, you know, like uh, Japanese professional wrestling. Um, you know, in the 80s kind of went two ways. There was one way that went really professional wrestling, like like similar to the style that we kind of know now. Mm. Uh, and then there was another wave that went the other way where they tried to make it more like MMA, martial arts based. And that's basically how Pride started, right. rings and pancreas and all this stuff. So like uh, all derived from that professional wrestling side that went that way. So, um, so I've always been a fan of that, like Tamora and all this. So I remember like, in 2002, when Josh would come and train at the original New Japan LA Dojo in Santa Monica, you know, I would we would have conversations about UWFI. I knew he was a big UW, UWFI fan. We would talk about Tamora and all this stuff when he just started doing pro, like pro wrestling, like proper in like New Japan. So he kind of always knew that. He always like I got to train with him a lot, and he showed he showed me all these really cool things that that work for us. So like that's kind of where we built our relationship, mm. and then uh, so obviously. You know, this is all pre UFC boom. So now everybody knows what an arm bar is or, right, you yeah. know, or, or, you know, a double wrist lock or whatever like that. But like in 2000, 2002 or whatever it was, nobody really knew that, you know, they, for the most part, the masses didn't really know that because they, they hadn't been exposed to it just yeah. yet. So now the, the style like this, blood sport, especially how they present it, uh, you know, in, in like this kind of like, dingy garage type (laughs) setting you know it's just like it's like a fight club thing yeah Uh, and it feels that way it feels heavy uh it's just something that i you know i'm a natural and i want to be a part of it even though like the beginning of my career was very more focused in that kind of style but now it kind of became more of like a goofy fun kind of showman i have you know that's all my basics so i kind of wanted to be a part of blood sport to show like you know i could still throw it down i'm still a wrestler (laughs) i'm still i can still throw i'm still a wrestler yeah Maybe you guys know me as like, you know, a commentator for New Japan and this and that, but like really I'm a wrestler and I'm a really good one at that. And I can do this, you know. So I think a lot of people were surprised by the first Bloodsport match uh with Simon. So uh but I I, I heard a lot of people had a, a lot of nice things to say. So I it's always nice when they go, Oh, forgot Rocky was a wrestler. <laughs> you won't, yeah. a Cuban dude who won't shut up. <laughs> yeah, right, man. It's yeah. it's it's crazy because it really does what what Josh has accomplished with Bloodsport is is give it this like uh, I don't know this like respect value that mm-hmm. like for me for example like seeing you in there I mean I knew you could work because I've seen you in New Japan I mean I've seen I've, I've seen a bunch of your your matches in New Japan and I know you can work and it's, it's like I I wasn't surprised but it was still like fuck yeah good like that it's a new level of respect that you're doing that you're stepping up and doing it. and same with like mox seeing moxley there uh having him step up to barnett like that's going to be a huge card i think you know dude, can we talk about how dope john moxley is dude he's pretty, pretty dope. dude i think he's he might be my favorite wrestler in the last like for the last like two years, year and a half. Yeah. I think he's my favorite wrestler to watch. Ever since he did that New Japan uh, G1, where he's just like wrestling all these different styles, I didn't even know he could do any of that. You yeah. know, like I knew him like he's a you know, hardcore guy. He could do the WWF, you know, WWE style, you know, really well. And he's just like- Sports entertainment. Pop, sports entertainment. But I, and I knew that like on the inside, he's a wrestler's wrestler, right? Like he's like a t- living, breathing Terry Funk type wrestler, you know, but like, uh, and then he like would wrestle, you know, one guy and then have like this like strategy style where he like working over the leg and the body part and then comes out with all these funky like submissions. I'm like, what the 
Like, yeah. I didn't even know he could do that. So, like, just the, you know, he had, like, I would say nine different, uh, you know, singles matches in that G1 or 10, whatever it was. And uh, each one was very different, which was cool. You know, and my favorite one was him again. Him and Ishii was probably my favorite one. That was so sick at Corican. Yeah, man. But, uh, Great fucking yeah. man. I love Ishii, man. That that dude. I could watch Ishii and uh, and Suzuki just like slap each other f- to the end of time, and I'm good. <laughs> dude, Mas Suzuki was insane. Yeah, that was yeah. insane. Yeah. That was insane. Uh, Especially I, the way he did it, like with the Tokyo Dome. Suzuki just walks down the ramp, yeah. all badass as hell. I was like, what? such a such a high moment in wrestling and and people you know people like to talk shit like oh wrestling you know all this aw's happening and wwe's fucking up and whatever i'm like dude if you like wrestling this is a very good time to be a wrestling fan there's a lot of cool <laughs> shit happening i don't know if you're paying attention and it's, and it's everywhere yeah. you know which is cool so yeah yeah and Not- Mo- mox i mean i liked mox even before like when he was ambrose or whatever and you know i haven't Ambrose Asylum shirt that my wife bought me because that's how much I would watch his matches and shit. She's like, "Here, yeah, I know you like him." I'm like, "Oh, okay." Um, but even then, you know, it was, it was a little goofier and at certain points and whatever. I could still see a, like the potential that there's some shit going on. Like the guy knows what what he's doing. And then when I saw right, him go to New right. Japan, I'm like, "Ooh!" And it just kept escalating. And then when I saw him in Bloodsport, I'm like, "Well, yeah, well, you know, that's, that's it. Like that's." The dude is uh, uh, himself is a huge fan of wrestling and right. and loves the business and, and is willing to do whatever it takes to elevate it. I think that's fucking great. So, dude, he's a man. He's a man. I'm I'm, I'm definitely uh, uh, now that I got to know him a little bit too. Like uh, you know, I'm, I'm even more of a fan of his. You know, like personally. So yeah, I support whatever that guy does. And to him, for him and Barnett to finally mix it up because like i feel like what it's been like a year or yeah, the a cursed year match year. man <laughs> yeah and the making. Is, yeah this is the third attempt i believe to make right. that match happen oh, right. yeah because then he got like staff infection or something yeah he got right? the first time he got staff infection which also fucked up his match with omega and then oh. uh and then the second time it was covid <laughs> it's like fuck it's never yeah. gonna happen but yeah it's finally happening uh April eighth, yeah, <laughs> April eighth, yeah. which is soon. Yep. Four, so, are you ready? <laughs> are I'm you, good. I'm ready? feeling great. Yeah, I mean, my personal life is crazy right now because I've been moving and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I, I'm completely ready uh, to wrestle. You know, against Chavo, and you know, Chavo is another guy who's like. I'm impressed to see Chavo in in the blood sporting, yeah. you know. I'm like, what? I mean, I'm surprised about it too. <laughs> that, that, I mean, he's a he's wrestling royalty. Obviously, the Guerrero family is you know royalty. So uh, it's really cool to see him, you know, elevate that too as well. Like jump in there and, and mix it up. Yeah, I think I definitely think like when you look at all the the matches, right? Obviously, like Mox and Barnett sticks out because that's an interesting one, right? And all these, you know, there's, and then there's a lot of like, just straightforward, like, okay, you know, there's going to be badass with Dickinson and like Mercer and blah, 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 whatever. But then you look at, you see Chavo and Rocky, you're like, I don't know, what, what, what is this going to be? <laughs> like, like the, how is Chavo going to be? You know, how does Rocky, okay, we saw Rocky, he can kind of do this stuff, like, you know, like this style, like, okay, cool, we're cool with it. We, you know, we, we like what we saw, but like, what is actually going to happen? So I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen either. So I'm, I'm pretty. I mean, they excited. could, they could tune into Talking Shopamania too and get it. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, uh, when it got announced, uh, I just got, I got a, a text from Chavo. He goes, uh, he, he goes, should, uh, Chico El Luchador and versus uh versus zombie chavo should we do that instead of <laughs> blood sport like, no i don't know man not a bad idea I don't know. <laughs> oh, let's talk to josh <laughs> yeah. josh will just come out and kill us <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys doing um, yeah what are you guys doing zombie chavo chico Luchador, get the fuck out of here <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome, man. I mean, I know you guys have worked together before, but I mean, any every match you can have against Chavo is a, is a you know another notch on the belt. It's a you know, like I said, royalty. The Guerrero family has been around you know forever and are so crucial to the industry as a whole. So Absolutely. I mean, uh, with this happening and working in Bloodsport, which has Mox, and and then also looking at AW, working with New Japan and working with Impact, and you got the Good Brothers over there. I mean, what are, have you thought about doing something at AEW? Like, do you, where do you think this is all heading? You know, I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, I, I would, of course, 
I'm always down. Like I like like Chavo. I, I was thinking about when you were talking about Chavo. Like Chavo's such a great ambassador of professional wrestling to so, in so many ways, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, this family, what his family has done, the amount of time that his family has been involved in professional wrestling, and the amount of time that Chavo's been on, uh, you know, worldwide television, uh, and, and even how he continues to. You know, he was working on the Rock Show, the Young Rock. He was on he was Glow. Something. He was on Glow, and yeah. he he's 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 just I feel like a great ambassador. So I was thinking like that's something that I would want to be, you know. And and I'm, what I'm trying, I guess, to be is now is like be an ambassador, you know, representing I guess New Japan in a way, you know, to Impact or to AEW, you know, Ring of Honor in the past, you know, and, and even I just did uh, the ROH. Um, uh, anniversary show and, and did commentary there so like why not you know if, especially during this whole pandemic like it's hard to have a voice when so much is going on in japan and and you know we're over here in the u.s and it's so separated right now you know besides like our product new japan strong every friday night cheap plug but uh <laughs> but um cheers i cheap i plug. cheap plug there you go cheers and uh but i feel like yeah i would want to be the guy to go and you know, dip his toes into into Impact or AEW. You know, like we saw uh, Finn Juice go to Impact, which right. I thought that was cool. Kenta went the, out there. The tag title. Yeah, that was Kenta went and did the AEW. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'd be the first junior to go and do that. You know, like maybe that route. Or like, I mean, you have a door right there with the Good Brothers. Man, the Good Brothers are on AEW every every week now. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. Those guys. Are working so hard right now. <laughs> like, like it's hard to find time for us to even, uh, you know, sit down once a week to do our podcast. You know, so like, it, it's just, it's just really, really crazy right now. But like, it's great for the fans mm-hmm. and for the wrestlers. You know, because you know, we we started the pandemic with wrestlers not knowing what was going to happen. We saw a bunch of wrestlers get released, and you know, things changed. A bunch of independent wrestlers not being able to make cash. You know, yeah. then uh, now here we are in this. You know this explosion kind of everybody's kind of figured out how to you know work around this pandemic and now all these opportunities are coming you know so uh i would i can't wait to see what happens in like a year you know it's getting crazier man did you see what they announced today no tell me stone cold's podcast on peacock on the wwe network with chris jericho what I was like, wait, what? And like Jericho posted it and was like, we're breaking the the, the forbidden door or whatever the fuck. I'm like, uh, <laughs> what's happening? That is, that is wild. <laughs> because that, I mean, I tried explaining to my wife why that's a big deal. And she was like, you're a nerd. Shut up. Like you fucking right. Mark. I'm like, no, no, but listen, it's that opens that door for real. Like, you know, there was obvious like tension between Jericho leaving the WWE and going to AEW. <laughs> So right. them working together means other stuff can work together. You know what I mean? I, if you can have AEW going over to like NXT or vice versa and like mixing that entire pool, impact all of them all together, like that's that's the least deal. conversation, right? Yeah. It's a least conversation. I mean, it could be just Stone Cold because Stone Cold can do anything can and Jericho can do anything, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, but like, it's at least uh, opens a conversation of like, hey why wouldn't we want to do something here and there? Or, you know, or like maybe there's a guy that's, you know, like, like you said, a guy or gal in NXT or on SmackDown that they haven't really done anything with. They don't know what to do with. Why not send them over to, uh, you know, to AW or to Impact or New Japan and heat them up and then send them back, you know, like what, you know, I mean, there's so many different ways to to do it. So, um, I don't know. That, that's pretty wild. That blows my mind that that's even going on. That's an interesting move, I think. I think it's an interesting time. Like I said, I think blood sport's going to keep growing, too. Like, it's its own thing. And, yeah. you know, it, it It can definitely start incorporating if they're, if everybody's going to start working together like this. I mean, I know GCW's done stuff with Ring of Honor and, like, Impact Wrestlers as well. So, I don't know. It's just a, a really good time. And this, this weekend coming up is a, the biggest weekend. I mean, it's... You got... Thursday blood sport and it's going to start leading into WrestleMania time and everybody's got their events going on. So it's a, it's a fun time. I think. Yeah. I'm excited. I mean, even talking shop has an event. I might as well plug it. Go for it. Yeah. (laughs) I want to talk to you about talking shop. I love it. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let me pull it up. We can talk about talking shop while I get all the information because I don't even know. the information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I've been, I've been uh, trying to, to keep up 
because there's so much shit like you said there's so much stuff going on but i try and keep up with as many of the the talk and shop episodes that it, it i remember listening to it when it was still part of jericho's thing you know when they would show up and right. and, and right. talk and get drunk in a hotel room that's where it blew up you know and, they would get so drunk that they couldn't remember what that they podcasted the day before <laughs> it would be so crazy there's some wild wild stories but i mean yeah it blew up on there and then obviously, you know, when the uh, the Good Brothers got released from WWE in the, in the beginning of this whole pandemic, then, uh, you know, it just kind of went crazy. And they, you know, Gallows had this crazy idea to do Time Shop of Mania. And I feel like that really like just pushed, uh, you know, the podcast even more and vice versa, you know, so. The worst uh, pay-per-view ever, uh, or what is it they call? <laughs> yeah, the worst pay-per-view ever. Yeah. yeah. And that, so, I mean, yeah, it's still available for anybody who has to check that out. I mean. They're they're crazy. They're crazy, wild, like straight out of the ga- like the mind of Anderson and Gallows. Just which are just two nutcases. I mean, if you know who the Good Brothers are, you know what to expect. If you're even, have you seen some of the stuff they're doing on on the on the YouTube with uh, AEW oh, on the BTE? I heard that's. <laughs> I remember just like let me, you know, the Good Brothers are because I don't watch uh, BT. I, I, there's too much shit going on, so right. I, I'm like, I have, I'm good. And and but I heard the Good Brothers run. I'm like, all right, let me check it out. And they're both naked, helicoptering their dicks. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Hell yeah! yeah. <laughs> like, all right, cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a good contrast to the right. to the young bucks releasing a children's book, you know. Right. <laughs> good Christian kids. Yeah, good old. <laughs> no, that's a relationship I never truly understood. Like when they, when it happened, I was like, "All right, cool." But uh, yeah, like really wholesome kids uh, right. hanging out with the Good Brothers. It's right. a little odd. Right. <laughs> Man, they just, I think that they're just amused by the Good Brothers. That's what I think. I think the Young Bucks, like, are, are just, because they, they would never live that life. They would never, you know, do the helicopter in their dicks around. So, like, I feel like they're just, like, so amused by it because it's just, like, what? It's like watching, I, I, I don't know, somebody self-destruct. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, like, I, I, I get it. I get it. I had a, I had, you know, I always had that one friend who was a complete lunatic that people avoided, right. but I'm like, I'm going to go hang out with that guy tonight. And it's yeah, <laughs> I laugh every time. The, the thing is like, every time I hang out with the good brothers, I like, I just can't stop laughing. You're just laughing for like, you know, eight hours and your face is all hurting <laughs> and you got like pain and you know, you, you drank a half a bottle of tequila. You didn't even know that you're just having the best time of your life. And I think that's one of the, one of the best things about them like they're just really really great dudes and great human beings and like they're they're like they're just fun to be around and that's kind of like what everybody just loves about them they're literally the good brothers yeah for sure (laughs) yeah they're the good brothers they they're hard workers they are friendly (laughs) and and you know it created they also created this kind of weird like i now i have this weird thing now if i if i see somebody with like a bullet club shirt or a good brother's shirt, you know, and I throw up the the two sweet, yeah. and they look and turn and they give me a two sweet. I'm like, that's no one else has that. Yeah, that's true. What that's a, who has that? Super true. Yeah, <laughs> like, like that's it's, it's almost a, like your own secret club. Like you're like, what's up? Oh, what's up, man? Yeah, yeah it, it, it harkens like, back to the old school like metal metal dudes that would do the horns to each other. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. like you know what that is and if you know what that is then you're you know you're in the know we're, we're now have something in common and we can like we can actually have a conversation just by doing this you know that's I mean? so cool yeah it's it's breaking nothing. down walls man talking about doors and walls and windows i mean the good brothers who knew yeah you know, I think that's, that's amazing it's kind of weird too how they got let go that uh that like after a match with taker which is like the highest honor you get right <laughs> at wrestlemania <laughs> Like you Taker's just, last match, <laughs> they work with Taker, and then yeah, yeah no, I mean, completely. I mean, I think we we kind of all found out why and how they you know they kind of got released you know after you know yeah. all the information that came out, but um, you know it, it's crazy that it even happened. You know, like especially like those guys. I were, were doing some of the, they did their best work, I think, with AJ at that moment, you know, like, like with Tigger, that was awesome. That was an incredible time. So, yeah, that was a fun match. It is what it is. It is what it is. I mean, those guys completely bounced back and turned, uh, you know, a negative into an extreme positive. Oh, yeah. And, you know, one of the driving forces of why 
one hundred percent one of the reasons why you know Impact and 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 uh, AEW are working together. Yeah. You know, and so and even why maybe New Japan is in the mix. I mean, if you think about it, because they're kind of like still connected New Japan. I mean, if it wasn't for this pandemic, I mean, they'd probably be there already. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and they're always representing Japan too. I mean, you look at their gear; it's always got you know right. Japan uh, text all over it, uh, either hiragana or katakana. I wanna, I, right. I I know some Japanese. There you go. <laughs> no, I mean you got to know where you came from, right? Like you always got to respect and know where you came from. I think that that's what uh, is important, no matter how high you go and the places that you you reach. You know, I think you always got to have at least you know some you know some toes on the ground and know exactly where. Uh, where you came from, I think that's important, and, and really Japan put them on the map, you know, especially Carl uh, Anderson. Yeah, 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 and I mean yourself too. I mean you've you've been there with Rapongi and and doing your thing for a while, and uh, it, it's one of those things like you are a New Japan wrestler. Like that's you know that that's all it is. It's not you're not like a free agent type of guy that's just floating around everywhere. Like you that you're from New Japan. So you know what? That, that's crazy that you say that because that's all I ever wanted. You know, like once I like realized that I wanted to be a professional wrestler, like for real, for real, like, like try to like do this as, as my livelihood or try to make it a career out of it. That's the only place that I wanted to be, you know, that's the only place that I wanted to wrestle. I wanted to wrestle for New Japan. I just thought it was the coolest, you know, I really just even, you know, I think watching like the first J cup with like Liger and Eddie Guerrero and all these guys, you know, uh, it, it just like expanded my mind. Like, look at this and look how the fans treat the wrestlers. And like, there's like just so much like respect. Of, it's like, it's like a sports spectacle, you know, more than anything. And it reminded, and then there were some parts that reminded me of like that eighties kind of feeling, you know, that, that kind of like romanticized thing that I grew up watching, you know, on WWE or, or whatever, or WWF at that time. And, uh, you know, kind of before it, like, really changed, you know. So I feel like, I don't know, I just, I, I fell in love with it. That's what I wanted to do. And, and I'm, I, it's crazy that uh, I'm a New Japan wrestler right now. You are, like, man. You did it. Well, I've been one for quite a while, <laughs> which is nice. You did it, man. Fuck yeah. And, and like, you know, not only that, but you also, like, with, we were talking a lot about the Good Brothers, but you're part of the Talking Shop podcast. You got, you, did you pull up the events for the? I do. I do. So it's Friday night. Uh, April 9th, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. I mean, we're going hard, I guess. Okay. Uh, it's at uh, Talking Shop Live from Riveters in Tampa, Florida. Okay. You can, uh, if you, if you want to get tickets, go to tnsmania.com, click the link. And uh, I think we're doing meet and greets. We're going to do like a live podcast. Uh, and we're probably going to be just drinking a bunch of alcohol and having a good time. Yeah, I was going to say, if you guys are recording it, I'm assuming for, to release after maybe like some stream or something or no, we might, we might stream it. We've been talking about streaming it on our Patreon. So, so, uh, you know, if, if you can't make it out to Tampa, uh, definitely, or you can't make it out live, I should say, uh, check out the Patreon, uh, which is talking shop on Patreon, patreon.com backslash talking shop. Talking shop. You can and, be a uh, little who, a big hoot or a famous hoot. Yes. That's our okay. tiers. Little hoot, five bucks. Make who ten bucks, famous who twenty bucks. Not bad. We do like, yeah, we do like these things uh, with these meetups like twice a month called Boozing with the Boys, and uh, we just hang out with the fans online. I mean, like we have a whole community of of, of people, and then uh, we also we also have like other events during the week, like every every Wednesday night when uh, AEW is on, uh, we have a group of, of of fans that get together on Patreon and watch it. Uh, together and talk about it so it's actually it's a really cool uh community that just kind of started from this crazy ass podcast you know so like yeah, i don't know it's awesome it's really yeah. that's and that's the that's the future for stuff like this for platforms for for podcasts and everything is that community like i've been trying to explain that to a few other podcasts that hit me up They're like how are you you know getting these guests and how's your show blowing up and i'm like community dude talk to your yeah. fans that's important yeah you know get get the patreon going get a discord or whatever do something you know and you guys yeah. got it down with the patreon i love the idea of boozing with the boys i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to jump in on one of those and get wasted and just jump in dude yeah when I, for sure I'll, I'll send you an invite for the next one for yeah, sure man, i want to get in uh, there <laughs> even, the, even the what is it the major po major wrestling podcast you know cardano and uh oh yeah 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 Cardona, um, Cardona and, uh, and Myers, they stole the idea from it. They, they call it boozing with the toys. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Of course they did. Of course. <laughs> They're always stealing our shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, so have you thought now that you're doing this blood sport stuff and you're kind of hanging out in the Josh Barnett world, uh, MMA ever like like want to do that again or like no? Don't want to nah, mess up the pretty I'm face. Old. I'm too old now. You're too old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too old now. I don't. I don't want to work that hard. You know, like like to to get. I thought about it in like. There was a time it was like 2000, I think the last time was like maybe like 2007, 2008 or 2010, something like that. No, I think it was like 2010. And uh, I, I had just um, left AAA and I came back to the States. I didn't know what exactly I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going to land. I didn't know if I was going to even pursue wrestling anymore. Like I was just kind of like tired of everything, like kind of, you know, living in Mexico and working, you know, down there kind of like, it was great, but it was also like it kind of took a lot out of me, like for passion wise for the business. And um, I had thought about doing MMA. So, so I had talked to Josh. He was like, well, come train with me and uh, we'll go from there. I would think I went for about a month, maybe really hard going to like fighter practice, maybe even less. And I was just getting hit in the face too much. And I was like, do I really want to get hit in the face for the rest of my life like this? Like, and, and trying to make a buck. I was like, this is going to be a lot harder. And yeah. I was like, after, <laughs> after all the years that you've put in, I was like, this is going to be a, such a major change. Uh, and you're going to basically start over. So I was like, I maybe wrestling I could start over, but I don't know if I could start over in MMA. So like, I got humbled and like, that was it. <laughs> hey man, the thing is, <laughs> like, tra training with Josh, he doesn't go, he, he only knows how to go hard, so. Yeah. It's rough. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> it's like the hardest practices of my life has always been with John. Yeah, dude. I went out with that dude uh, to a bar after a concert and uh, some another band member from a band, I think Bad Wolves, his name is John. He like wasted, goes up to Josh. He's like, I challenge you to an arm wrestling match. And I look at him. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> dude. Josh is a trained killer. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> a legit trained killer. He was UFC heavyweight champion. He was Pancreas champion. Yeah. I was, I, I, the, when he said that, I'm like, really? Let me get my yeah. phone out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I need to record this one. It's uh, like, even if Josh was to lose, you're going to get arm barred or knocked out. <laughs> like, I'm so, it's going to smash your hand through the, ta the desk <laughs> or whatever table you're on. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, um, well, that's good. I mean, yeah. I mean, Barnett's still fighting. He did a bare knuckle match the other day, and I'm still I'm blown away by that. That was that. wild. Because that was wild. Cause, yeah, was I mean, wild. I'm a, I'm a year older than you, and I'm like done doing any of that. Like, if I do, <laughs> if I train, it's only just for fun. Like, it's not for a competition of any kind. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I don't think I could. I don't think I could put my body through that at this point. Uh, you know, but I, I, I'm still so excited about wrestling still, you know, like things like this, like blood sport, I want to do, I want to do like the, the, the fun stuff, or at least what's fun to me. Uh, and, and kind of something, you know, things that are like challenging. Cause I, I, like, I sat back and I was like, I've done a lot, you know, I've done like, like a lot. It's been a long career, you know, like 20 something years. And like, yeah. I only want to do the stuff that makes me happy. And I, I want to do the things that like, will like i'll have drive for as opposed to like just doing it and not being happy and not you know just working you know wrestling and not enjoying it or it be fulfilling you know so yeah do you have all your championships like do you get to do you keep some like do like the you know usually i give them back i got maybe i have a, a junior tag one some like upstairs somewhere they don't give you like a duplicate to take home or like a, a replica or something like that no, no. No. <laughs> no. I mean, I would think so, so right? It's Something usually just one. Well, because there's usually only one championship, and like that's the one that they pass from person to well, person. Well, yeah, yeah, I imagine that. Like, that's fine. But I mean, like, yeah. you should have something that you can take home and put on your wall and be like, look, I did that. I, I mean, I like, I, I guess I got the most junior tag championships of all time, like eight or something. Did they give you like yeah. a plaque or something? I have, I have one of those. Okay. I have one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, call you at least something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you know, they give you pictures. They give you pictures. Make it into an NFT. You know, that's oh, how they right, do. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Get that cryptocurrency. I've been trying to figure out. I have friends of mine that that never have uh, released any kind of art, hitting me up like, "Hey, man, how do I release my art on NFT?" I'm like, "Really? 
<laughs> that's what you want to do there? <laughs> All right. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm going to have to figure it out at some point because that is the future. They're already talking about you can you can buy shit online with cryptocurrency now. So it's. I mean, Chico El Luchador has even jumping on it. He he released some Chico El Luch- something called Chico Coin. I don't know. I feel like he's Chico just Coin. To, yeah, he's just trying to rip people off, but he released it. All right. Open open seed. You know, all right. You gotta get on it. I mean, crypto is the future. It is know? the future. It is, man. And you don't want to get left behind. Like every time I see something like this, and then the older I get, I'm kind of like, oh, God damn it, I gotta learn something new. Uh, but it's fine. You gotta learn it. You gotta learn it because that's if you. Otherwise, you get left behind. You don't want that. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I ju- that, that's what I did. Like I went to uh, to Japan uh, in December for the Tokyo Dome. So yeah, there's a two week quarantine, right? So for the two weeks, I studied my little butt off on crypto. And now I'm a crypto junkie, as they say, because like now I'm com- like educated myself about what it was. Because like I kind of dipped my toe in every once in a while, and and the last time I dipped my toe in, I I, I bought. I was just telling somebody I was like I bought like three quarters of a bitcoin, right, or like seven point seventy five of a bitcoin. Now if I would have held on to it, it would have been worth <laughs> like sixty thousand dollars or whatever, fifty something thousand dollars, whatever that was. But now, you know, so like I wanted to know like, but I didn't know what I was buying. I was just right. buying a thing that people kept talking about and didn't know what the utility was or like what they do. But like now yeah. I'm fully in and I'm, I'm educated and I know about it. So like, uh, you know, I, I completely think that that's the future. And if you have the opportunity to jump in, I mean, I think you should definitely look into it, you know, and consider it. Yeah, even a dumbass like me, I'm, I have Bitcoins and, and Ethereum right. and a couple. I have a, a cryptocurrency portfolio. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Hell you know, yeah, you know who got me into it? Who? Sandman. Really? Dude. Sandman the crypto guy? Dude. <laughs> he, uh, he came down here to uh, Southern California, PCW Ultra. I don't know if you've heard. Yeah. And uh, he did a, he did a, dude. First of all, I never thought in my entire life that in my 30s I was going to see Sandman versus Terry Funk in Southern California in a death match. Uh, but there they were, bleeding to death at wow. <laughs> in their 50s. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, I, Terry's got to be almost 70, right? It's funk, yeah. 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 Uh, That's wild. It's wild, and so after the show, though, I, I you know I was I'm buddies with um, Joseph the Sheik, and he, you mm-hmm. know we're hanging out, talking to him, and Sandman walks by with his suitcase, and he's like, "What are you guys doing after?" I'm like, "Uh, oh, what are you doing after?" And he's like, "I'm going to the hotel to drink." I'm like, "Yes, that's what I'm doing too." <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't have a room in the hotel, but I'm going to go to that hotel to drink with you. <laughs> And then, uh, uh, it was him and, and Zach Saber Jr. We met up and with a couple friends of mine too, and we just just taking shots of tequila while Sandman educated me on Bitcoin. Just damn, <laughs> a while ago then, right? Uh, I mean, a couple years, three years ago. Damn, and uh, he he was all about it. So I, I'm uh, you know good for him because he was ahead of the game for me. I, I I started investing after that. I'm like, you know what? If Sandman's into it, something's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look at it now. Yeah, like it's, it's crazy how much has blown up in the last, like, especially like even in the last like year and a half. You know, so yeah. like PayPal's doing it now, and 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 they're letting people buy shit with their crypto wallet. Like you just dude, Visa <laughs> is is gonna start accepting Ethereum. So it's like crazy. it's over. There goes the current the U.S. currency. That's it. Yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's uh, I think it's going to be the biggest transition of wealth back to like uh, you know from from the one percent as they say back to the to kind of the, yeah people especially the middle class you know so uh, I think it, I think it's important because I mean it really is the future. It's it, in so many ways and like you know the whether you want to hold Bitcoin or like, and that's probably the safest way to do it, you know, is just by holding on to Bitcoin and just holding on to it forever. I mean, like, what if you bought gold, you know, tons of gold, you know, back in the day, I mean, held on to it now. I mean, I think it's going to be eventually it's, you know, they're going to take over gold's market cap and it's going to be massive, yeah. you know? And it's like, so easy I, to do. So easy to do. Yeah. And that's one of the hard parts. I think like people just get turned off. Like, I gotta do what? I gotta make a wallet. Dude, get, I get a this. PayPal, and that's it. Like I, every every paycheck, I throw money at it. That I'm like, you know what? I would have dropped this money on beer. Right. Let me throw it in here instead. Maybe buy less beer 
and, uh, yep. and you know, I'll have, you know, a six pack as opposed to two six packs, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> just cut you're, you're going to be able to buy the whole bar. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, now I have a bar, you know, <laughs> I never right. had a bar my whole life, but now exactly. I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. People, people might not be into this, but like, y'all should, should look be. into it. Not into it. You should, you should definitely look into it because you don't want to miss the trend because at one day, Bitcoin is going to be so expensive, like you're not going to want to get into there's it. Not, it's going to be hard to get in. Yeah. It's going to be hard to get in because it's scarce and there's only a limited amount of it. So, like, yeah. Do it while you can. Yeah. Because it, it's going to suck if you don't have, you know, if, if, let's say, for example, crypto becomes the main currency for everything and dollars are not like they're worth crap, like, like the Cuban, you know, pesos or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? You're poor now. <laughs> you got to figure it out. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, I went so. to, when I went to Cuba, uh, you know, I, I used to speak Spanish with my mom all the time. And, you know, we would call dollars pesos. It was just in my brain. It was like band-aids or band-aids are all band-aids. You know I mean? It, right. All video right. game systems are a Nintendo, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> So, so my mom still says, like, you play Nintendo still? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, but to me, you know, the dollar was peso. So I went to Cuba and I, I, um, I had a bunch of money on me. So I just, I found this lady selling pizzas and I was hanging out with a bunch of kids. I'm like, I'm going to buy, give me all your pizzas. I'm going to buy them and give them to the kids. And the lady goes, oh, okay, uh, 20 pesos. So I gave her a $20 bill and she passed out. <laughs> Wait. Are you serious? she fell to the ground i'm like wait what and i just like yeah i pick her up i'm like i'm like, are you okay like you know fanning her giving her some water and she's like me and you put that away and put that away i'm like what do you mean you said 20 bucks and she was like that's too much money they're gonna rob you i'm like oh <laughs> <laughs> like wait what <laughs> oh. so I, I still gave oh, it my to bad. Her. i still gave it to her i'm like here put that away there's just 20 bucks to me just put it away <laughs> And right. give me all of your food and I'll, you know, I'll go feed the kids. But wow. dude, it's, it was nuts back. I don't know if it's still as bad. I know now there's more like um, they've taken down the embargo. So there's more communication between Cuba. Right. But back then it was like a dollar was like $40 pesos or some shit like, or even more like 80 pesos a dollar or some shit like that. So, wow. so 20 bucks is a whole lot of money for them. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, man. But that, I mean, and that's what very well, maybe not to that extreme, but right. that, could, that, that could happen to our, you know, our U S economy, you know? And, oh, it's going to happen. I see it. It's going to happen. Yeah. You know, especially coming out of, uh, you know, this pandemic, I mean, we're watching it happen right now, you know, as, as they they're creating money out of thin air, you know? So dude, I have, we'll see what happens, but. I have so much I want to talk to you about, and I know we have limited time and you're busy. You got to move. How much time do you have? Uh, yeah, I got about maybe like 15, 20 more minutes. All right, cool. Well, I wanted to talk to you about your whiskey with the talking shop. You, you, how much involvement do you have with that? Um, I mean, they, they sent us some samples. We tasted them. Uh, we selected the one we liked and then uh, we, we, we helped with the label, and um, now it's out. And, I, like, the first batch completely sold out online. Uh, I think the only way you could get it was the, the actual, like, uh, they had some bottles, like, at the actual um, brewery. But besides that, it sold out. So they're working on the second batch now, which I think it should be done, like, really, really soon. So uh, we actually just got a text from the, uh, the brewery recently, so... Uh, so that, or the distillery, I should say. So uh, we're 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 super excited about it. I mean, it does its job. Let me tell you that it does its job. Get you <laughs> fucked up. That's good. <laughs> More importantly, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I saw the announcement. I'm like that makes perfect sense. In fact, you should have a whole alcohol line. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Just, well, <laughs> sorry, my dogs are. Yeah, okay. But um, no, you know, it started with we wanted to do a beer really bad because you know I think first of all you know. We're, we're all beer drinkers first, right? Like we love the taste of beer, you know, we love beer. So it kind of started with that and we were working with a brewery out in uh, in um, in Nashville, I think. And, and, and uh, but like COVID happened, they weren't too sure about like how the laws were gonna change and it kind of just like turned into things. So like we got the initial, like, like a, 
I think he bottled maybe like a hundred cans for us. So we had like the first batch and we were just like getting, basically we were just drinking them. And like, <laughs> talking to nothing. We saw them on like impact for like the first like month or so. And then, and then they, and then they were done. So we didn't get, we didn't actually get to sell them. So then my, my wife was like, well, why don't you guys, you know, you guys do like wine. You know, we always call them, you know, red wine, the blood, right. And we, we like to drink wine too. So yeah. Uh, my wife was like, that might be an easier way to get it to everybody. So she reached out to, uh, to a winery and we, you know, we talked to them. They were, got, they got really excited about like, you know, what we could do. And we, boom, we turned out the, the wine was easy. We turned out the wine, uh, like really quickly. So we've got a red wine. We've got a, a white wine. The red wine is, uh, the hoop blood. White wine is yeah, Blanco. We, we, we named it after the wives to kind of, just say, you know, they always deal with us and put up with us. So we kind of like, you could kind of like, we, we on the label, it's like got our three wives on there. So okay. we thought it was cool. And um, so, yeah, that's available at tnsmania.com, both of those. And uh, we, we still got plenty of supply. And we're actually doing our, a rosé that we're calling brosé. And <laughs> that, <laughs> I like rosé because I like I like the the taste of rosé. Like it's something like if you just want something light, it's like great, you know? Yeah. So uh, so we call it brosé. We put the hoot on there, the owl. Nice. And uh, we're going to be doing a limited. I think we're doing like 50 bottles at first. So it'll be like a limited edition, like summer type thing. Nice. And so, like the wine we've got down. So now, now we've got the bourbon, you know, so the bourbon is good. And then now the next venture will definitely be the beer. Well, you and, know, uh, uh, you know that, you know what the name of the podcast is the RRBG. You know what that means, right? No. Our rock and roll beer guy. Oh, that's what my, that's who I you're am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm helping. Well, no, are you know what? Plug? Let, are you the plug for the beer? Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm going to look, hold on a second. I have to cut this out and we're back. Uh, <laughs> We had to go. Yeah. I'm sorry, there. Hoots. We had to go talk a, a little side business. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, it's gonna be good. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it, keep Well, it's good to hear that the you know the wine's ready, the bourbon's ready, and hopefully a beer is ready in the future. Yes, uh, absolutely. You know, it, it, I love the whole thing, man. I, I'm I'm a big, you know, as I said, I'm a big drinker as well. I'm not like I used to be way worse. I, I when I was working in the beer industry full time, I uh, I was drinking like ten beers a day or some wild wow. shit like that. And ever since I I left the full time job, like I, I'm like, all right, let me. I can't be drunk on Tuesday. <laughs> To get up for Wednesday, that's the, the biggest problem. Right, the here. hangovers, man. It's too <laughs> much. I got to work during the week and get it right. done right, you know. Uh, but my weekends, I still go hard. You know, when I have nothing to do the next day, I'm like, oh, well, I'm right now drinking a a Joe Rogan Kill Cliff CBD drink, <laughs> pineapple jalapeno with tequila. Holy shit. How is that? It's good. It's tasty. Wonderful. Yeah, these are one of the sponsors of our show. Uh you live in LA. I got to get you some of this. I'll say. Okay, yeah, I'll I'm, I'm, like I always see like Kill Cliff stuff. And I've never had it, so I, I, I definitely need to get on. I'll get you. It. I'll get you hooked up. I'll get you hooked up, and then also drinking my beer, which I'm out of, and I need another one. But um, just to get close to wrapping up the show, I also, you know, I, I wanted to know a little bit more about you too, like personally. Uh, how Latino do you like? Has your culture in like? How much of it do you follow at home? Like, are you cooking a riandula every? You know, like. How far do you go? Do you still go see the family? Do you guys do all the holidays and stuff? Uh, that's a good question. So, like, my my mom makes it, you know, like, she'll make, like, uh, arroz con, con candules and, like, uh, you know, she'll make a pedneal, like, once a year for us. So it's not it's not as much as, like, obviously, like, when I was living in, in my mom's house and, you know, she would make it more often. But, um, you know, we have pasteles and, you know, pastelillos every once in a while. So, like, um, that and and that's what I'm all, I'm all about. Any kind of empanada, that's like my, that's my shit. Right oh there. shit! Okay. <laughs> I'm all about an empanada. So, um, but uh, you know, I did. I, so my 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 dad was born in Rincon, Puerto Rico. Okay. So like you know, his, so his you know he was he was like very you know like Af Afro Latino. You know, like very dark skinned. Uh, so like it, it's funny like when you know when he, they moved to the to the states. You know, a lot of people that, you know, sometimes they'd be speaking, or like, especially when they came to LA, they, you know, a lot of people would be speaking Spanish. They didn't know my dad can speak 
fluent, perfect Spanish, you know. <laughs> my mom, my mom, she did okay. She, you know, she speaks Spanish, but but they just didn't really speak in the house, you know. So so I didn't really grow up like speaking Spanish except for like, you know, every curse word under the you know right, right. Under, under the book. But you know, uh but other than that, um, you know, I had some of the culture, I think, you know, through that. Oh, there was always, you know, salsa music playing as far back as I could remember, you know, Hector Laveau, I mean, it was oh, yeah. like my parents' age, you know, coming through like the late seventies and, and eighties, you know, uh, Ruben Blades, you know, all these guys. So like Ruben Blades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ruben Blades. Shout out to Ruben Blades, man. What a career he's in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, Willie Cologne, all these guys, man, who's dope as hell. Yeah. Man. So like, I, you know, I like, I didn't really, I don't feel like I really, um, like had a like I you know, grew up with it like I didn't really have a love for it and so like I think I got a little older then I started to really appreciate like that that part of my culture you know like like the music and even more of the food because you just you don't get to have it that yeah. much anymore you know so like when we were having it frequently and now it's like it's like a treat like oh I'm gonna have this you know so like I don't know it's cool and then Puerto Rico itself I haven't been in a really long time you yeah. know like a unfortunately um but i mean it like I, I i think i went maybe like three or four times in my lifetime and uh i mean it's definitely like exactly you know what the what the name of the isla de encanta it's like it's a beautiful beautiful island with like beautiful people and it's like right in the caribbean it, it, it's incredible you know yeah and i mean I, 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 I i'm wondering how they're doing after like being bombarded with all these hurricanes like I, now I know. you know at the time it's bad but now too like all the rotten shit that's got to be going on you know yeah no absolutely absolutely and uh and you know, like just family that we've talked to they like my mom always like when i'm go like how's our family in puerto rico and she kind of like gives me updates every once in a while and it's just like yeah, you know, everything's okay, you know, like, they were okay during the hurricanes, but then, you know, they couldn't really, like, leave their area, you right. know, so, like, they had to, be, like, one of my cousins who works um, for a telephone company, he was one of the first people they sent over to help get, like, the, the lines and everything back so they could have, you know, telephone service and, and cell phone service, so, um, he, you know, we, we uh, he was like, tell me where everybody lives, because I had access to supplies, so, you know, we were, like, it, checking with all the family members like who needs what like you know we my, my cousin can try to see if he can get it to you so like he was like out there like driving supplies to like family members and stuff it was like it was wild when, when that, that hurricane hit and um it was nuts man like yeah i mean it, like even like what can you do like you try to do as much as you can like we, like we we're able to like raise a little bit of money uh like myself cole cabana and ian riccaboni i remember at ring of honor we did a show in miami we were raising that's awesome yeah, we were raising funds, and I, I put up uh, some of my costumes and stuff that I had, like and that we eBayed and sold. And uh, we did another thing here in LA with uh, EWF with Jesse Hernandez uh, in LA. That was cool. And uh, you know, we raised a few a few thousand dollars, you know, to, and sent it over there. So like, I don't know. It was like when you have a history like that, especially like like my dad was born there. Like, I don't know maybe you felt this when you went to Cuba, but you, you feel like there's something that, that connects you to that. Right. Yeah, like, like sure. you feel like, I don't want to say like it's home, but it feels there's something of that feeling like in your, like internally, you know, that you feel. So I don't know. I just like, I wanted to, I, I wish that I, I, I was more involved in it. Like I grew, I wish I like, I would go there for summers or something like when I was a kid, because uh, you know, I wish it was more part of my culture, especially growing up in LA. It feels like so disconnected. Yeah. Um, you know, Puerto Rican culture out here, like there's not very many Puerto Ricans, not very many Cubans, you know? So like, yeah. I think the Puerto Rican, would have like the Puerto Rican, um, Puerto Rican day, uh, thing like in, in Bo like, what is it? Bonilla park or whatever. Yeah. Like, out here. Yeah. 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 But I've never uh, been to that. Like that's it seems never been to that it seems forced. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I never been to it either. I, I mean, I I probably like it though. I feel like it would be a good excuse to get drunk, but like <laughs> yeah, for sure get drunk, get some good food in you. I'm probably sure. some good food too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, dude, I'm so sad. I I moved to LA 4 years ago uh from Miami. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, and and uh, there is no Cuban food out here. There is mm -hmm. there are some restaurants that exist that say that they make Cuban food, 
Right. But no. And today specifically, that was my lunch. I found this, I, you know, I've been on a, on a hunt. I found this mm -hmm. place called it Gamao. It had like a Cuban sounding name. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. And they have this soup that Cubans eat called Caldo Gallego, which is a, a Galician soup of some okay. kind with chorizo and uh, potato and white beans and shit. And I, I'm, they had it. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, give me that. Give me a Cuban sandwich. Give me some, you know, papa rellena, whatever you got. And all of it was awful. Really? <laughs> it was all so wrong. Like, the Cuban sandwich was literally a French bread with ham and cheese. It was a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> That doesn't sound good at all. Oh, <laughs> what is this? I took. I, it was so bad that I, you know, you know, people take pictures of their food for Instagram and shit. Mm -hmm. I did that, but not to be a show off. I was just like, this can't be this terrible. <laughs> Send it to my Cuban friends. I'm like, what is this bullshit? Yeah, damn. I'm actually so after this Tampa thing, uh, like, like. I'm, I'm tr we're probably going to move to Florida. We're probably going to move to the East Coast. But you just got a new place. Well, you're just moving right now. <laughs> no, we moved out of our old place. Oh, okay. We're still, we're still, hold on, that's my, my, my children. But uh, <laughs> we just moved out of our old place in LA. We're staying with my with family now. Oh, okay. And then while we, while we kind of check out Florida, to be honest. So it starts with Tampa. But um, you know, we're gonna probably look at you know, we're gonna look in Orlando, we're gonna look in, in the Miami area as well. So I'd stay away from Miami if I were you. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be the Bitcoin capital of the world. <laughs> uh, I say stay the stick in Tampa and then like you can visit Miami because it's not that uh, far, you know. I'm gonna have to get some spots though to, to go eat because that's like the one thing she's like, What do you wanna do when you get over there? I was like, the only thing I wanna do is I wanna eat Cuban food and I you know, I wanna have some spots. I got, to go I got some spots for you, don't worry. I got recommendations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've dude, I like I'm not a chef, but I've seriously considered like starting a Kickstarter or something like let me I'll start at the first real ass Cuban place in, in LA because right. none of these places Porto's is as close as it gets. Okay. Portos is as close as it gets, but you're not there. Uh, but Sayas is run by Mexicans. Like, no. Right. And I have nothing against Mexican people, but you don't know. It's not your culture. You're not making the right food. It's just a little different, yeah. 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 So, sure. uh, and I've tried them all. Like, Cochinito's not bad up in, in, like, Beverly Hills or, like, North Hollywood or something. It's not bad, but $12 for a Cuban sandwich, that sandwich <laughs> should be 6 bucks. You know? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I, I digress. As they you say. know what, you gotta look for the trucks. There's some decent trucks. I feel like that they usually that, that like they'll have like a an actual Cuban dude. I feel like I had one. Maybe it was like the Cuban or, guy or John Favreau's. Who the, you know, he's got his <laughs> chef Bono truck or whatever. Oh yeah, that's what it was like. John like was there. Jesus yeah. Christ, oh. man. <laughs> uh, all right, but anyway, um, let's uh, let's let's call, let's wrap it up. So. Bloodsport, April 8th. You're going up against Chavo Guerrero. Yep. It's going to be a classic. I already know it. Uh, I have a feeling that it might. Uh, to be honest, like, if there wasn't the star power of uh, Barnett versus Moxley, I would think that maybe Chavo versus Rocky could literally 100% steal the show. For sure. I think, it, yeah. you know, it, it, it's... Again, yes, yeah, like you said, the star power. And also, you know, it's Barnett's show, it's so... And it's the weight of whatever how long you know the third time that they're finally going to be able to do it the anticipation of that so like if you take those factors out of it rocky travel would be the one for sure for sure <laughs> gotta put you over that's the way like you know that's the only way, it's the only way i'll take it yeah you know? no for sure it's it's uh it's definitely a stacked card i'm excited to see it i mean and ever since four or five and four and five were uh i feel like they figured it out the production right. value the camera angles the the lighting everything looked like something new where like the first couple still looked like a live you know independent show it was good but it, it was just like a, a live independent show where like now there's more ca good cameras and good lighting and it's a thing man it's the, don't miss it I'm, i i know i've every time there's a blood sport i talk about it on the show i have people that are going to be on the on the card on the show it's not because i'm being paid i'm not being paid to do this i just genuinely love it and and love what you guys are doing man that's awesome. Yeah, well, I'm I'm excited for it. I hope everybody will check it out. Um, I I I don't know where it's streaming. Do you know where it's streaming? I think it might be. It's uh, streaming Game Changer Wrestling. I got here. You can get tickets at Eventbrite, uh, Fight TV. It's I believe it has it on the flyer. So Fight TV is where you'll be able to order it. 
Uh, but just Google Josh Barnett's Bloodsport 6, April 8th. You got your Talking Shop live event April 9th. Yep. 10 p.m. You get tickets at tnsmania.com and then check out the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Talking Shop for more info. Become a hoot. Get to know what that even means. Get to know what it means to be a good brother, to be, to be <laughs> brother, a good sister. Yep. Yeah, good sister. Get, learn what it is to be brothered softly. Um, <laughs> I've been trying to figure out what brother softly means for like, I don't know how long. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll tell you what my, I, I posted, a, uh, I got some new headshots and I posted it up on Facebook and I just put the hashtag brother me softly. And my wife's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, that don't, don't worry about it. And she got we mad. Get it. She got we mad. Get it. Yeah, she got mad. She's like, what you, wow. Okay. I'm like, no, no, you just wouldn't understand. All right. Like. Uh, it's fine, but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. learn learn about the. It's a fun. It's a fun show. Uh, you guys talk to some great uh, workers and, and performers and people of, of of different. It's not just all. Is it all just wrestlers? No, right. You got other. No, guests. we got some different people from from all over. And and to be honest, it's it's just really like what it is like being in the locker room, hanging out with the you know with the wrestlers or the guys or gals, and and uh, you know or like what you do after, you know, like you go and have a beer and talk about, you know, what happened at the show or what's going on in or, life. Or and, Bitcoin and, with Sandman. Or, <laughs> Bitcoin with Sandman. Who would have known? Dude. Sandman's like Bitcoin rich right now. Who would have known? He's probably his portfolio. I, I, I got to know what's in his portfolio. Sandman, where, wherever you're at, let us know. Hit him up. <laughs> but yeah, uh, get, get on the Patreon, guys. It's worth it. Uh, you know, there's also some free clips. If you don't have the money for Patreon, there's free uh, episodes on YouTube, right? As well. Yep, three episodes on YouTube, and then uh, you can also listen to the uh, the podcast audio, the audio podcast on uh, Spotify. All the things, Apple, Apple Google. Apple. Yeah. And uh, if they want to follow you, figure out what's going on with your life at Azucar, right? Azucar Rock. Yeah, at, at Azucar Rock, A Z U C A R R O C on Twitter, on Instagram, and uh, also on uh, TikTok. On TikTok, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the thing, man. That's the future. So get on it. But yeah, brother, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I wish you the best on the match and 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 also your career. You know, obviously your career is already. Did you looking at the list of your championships? It's insane. So you've had a great <laughs> career, and yeah. it's. Uh, I'm sure it's only going to get better and and bigger, and you know, until it's not anymore. And then you're still doing shit because that's how it goes. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm you know I'm just trying to go as hard as I can while I can. And, uh, you know, and, and then also try to, you know, my, my next thing is, you know, trying to give back to this next generation of wrestlers who like me, you know, you know, just wanted to do it, didn't know how to do it and then found a way somehow to make it work, you know? So, um, you know, that's just, that's what I want to do is, you know, and, and a great way to, to kind of help develop and watch is, you know, I'm extremely, uh, a part of the New Japan system called, you know, New Japan Strong. It's every Friday night on njpwworld.com. You can see all the young and up-and-coming talent that, you know, that we've kind of handpicked to be a part of this. Uh, the Young this, Lions. You know, yeah, the Young Lions, you know. So check it out. It's, I think it's a great show. It's the I think it's the best pure wrestling show on on anywhere right now, you know, streaming, on TV, wherever Awesome, man. Oh, you know what? Um, before I let you go, I, if, if I don't mention my buddy Rain and Bozio sent me a question. Bozio, sorry. Bozio, I got his last name wrong. Rain and, <laughs> he wants to know if you prefer takoyaki or okonomiyaki. Damn, that's a good one. Uh, okonomiyaki is, as I would go with that over takoyaki. Takoyaki is like an octopus uh, balls, mm-hmm. right? Not testicles. Like, not, no, not testicles, <laughs> like fried octopus balls. Yeah. And then uh, okonomiyaki is like a pancake style fried thing. I don't know, it's, it's incredible, especially like with beers and stuff. It's like, it's insane. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, my buddy Rain and uh, his son of the famous drummer Terry Bazio of uh, Frank Zappa. He's uh, been training lately to get and get, getting, you know, getting that brother pump going. Okay. And uh, the pump. Yeah, he's, he's getting <laughs> jacked, dude, because he wants to. He wants to give it a go at in the ring. And I told him, like, we got Santino Brothers not too far, and the New Japan Dojo, and you know, get it going. And, and I'll help you if you let me be your manager. I think I, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm too old to go in the ring, but I'll be the guy. I'll be the manager slash mouthpiece that can take a bump outside. No problem. Yeah. 
Beautiful. I'll take a chair shot. That I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, brother. Uh, uh, thank you again. It's an honor to have you on for real. And we'll be in touch. You know, let's. I'll, I'll hit you up about some business. A little side stuff? Okay, cool. All right, I man. appreciate it. All right, thanks for having me, everybody. Too, See you soon. Too sweet, brother. <laughs>